be eight wonders in the world, but today there are hundreds of wonders. Every invention of science has changed this world into a land of wonders. Every invention of science has changed this world into a land of wonders. The wonders are not only beautiful but also useful. Let me discuss about some of the wonders of science. Aircrafts. How useful our aircrafts are? They, we were not born with wings, but we always wish to fly like apes. God, science has given us what God has not. Today, we can travel from one corner to the other corner of the world. How accessible and easy it is to travel. No mountains, no rivers can stand in our way. Today, we can even travel to the moon. We can even travel to the moon. Our rockets, our jets will take us there. What a change from bullet cars to aeroplanes. Our radio. Our radio is even more wonderful. It brings you news and music from far and wide. You can hear, you can hear great men and enjoy music in your own room. You can hear great men and enjoy music in your own room. How small your transistor is, but it provides you great service. Now you can carry the wide world in your small pocket. Now you can hold the whole world in your fingers. But let me remind you friends, our television is even more wonderful. You don't only hear, but you also see people talk, people sing or even dance. So today we cannot live without science. Science has given us a new life. How easy is the work of a how easy is the job of a doctor or a surgeon? Today a surgeon can do what even a magician cannot. How wonderful is the X-ray? Are these rays less wonderful than the rays of the sun? Science has created some fearful things too. Atom bombs, hydrogen bombs are great wonders. No doubt, they are also a danger to mankind and humanity. However, it is not it is nothing wrong with science. It is nothing wrong with science itself. Science has given us atomic energy. It is a very powerful weapon. In fact, it is the greatest wonder of science. But it is for us to use it well. Atomic energy, if rightly used, can create this can create a new heaven on this world better than any other pleasure or the old heaven created by God himself. If we misuse this energy, we can transform this world into a hell, into a condition which will be even worse than hell. It is in our hands now how we can make this world a heaven or hell. Now I would like to conclude my speech by telling that the earth is ours, the science is ours. We can create wonders if we believe in our stars. Thank you. Transistor, radio, have you ever seen it? Not in real life, but actually. <coughs> and just we never mentioned the mobile. Do you think that has replaced all these things? Not all of them, but some. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Mohammad, for increasing our knowledge. Astra, I was born, I was in deep earth's crust for billions of years. I struggled and struggled. But now, I am considered as a precious gem. Can you guess the topic? It's diamond. Now we invite Amar to tell us about diamond. Good morning to respected dignitaries, judges and teachers and my dear friends. Today, I have one of class 9 who is going to speak on my favorite topic, which is diamond. So, we say that a woman's best friend is diamond and it is the most precious stone in the field of jewelry. Mm. There are several types of diamonds. Diamonds which are uncut half, golden eye, French blue, etc. And the most expensive diamond is the graph pink which is sold by Sotheby's. A diamond could be, a diamond could be recognized by color, carrot, clarity and cut. So, how is a diamond made? A diamond is made out of carbon, highly organized carbon. Geologists are still guessing how diamonds were formed in Earth from 1 billion to 3 billion years ago. According to a recent study in journal Nature, they think that the recipe follows something like this. First, bury carbon dioxide 100 miles into the Earth. Second, heat it to about almost 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Third, squeeze under pressure of 725,000 degrees pounds per square inch. Fourth, quickly rush towards the Earth's surface to cool. If this process sounds a little difficult to you, thank a synthetic diamond manufacturer. Now, there are two ways to manufacture diamond in the laboratories. The first method, the first synthetic method is high pressure, high temperature, which is also known as HPHT. It is the closest thing to the diamond producing bowels of earth 
subject in graphite to intense heat and pressure. Tiny handles in an HPST machine are squeezed down onto the graphite as intense electricity is absent, producing a gem-like quality diamond in just a few days. These diamonds are however not aren't pure as the natural ones because a metallic solution is mixed in with the graphite. The other diamond producing method is chemical vapor deposition. Chemical vapor deposition turns it back on intense pressure but cranks diamonds more flawlessly than the nature can produce. Manufacturers place a diamond in the diamond chamber uh, uh, squeezing down onto the pressure and then tapping a the natural gas with a microwave beam. As the gas is heated to almost 2000 degrees, the carbon atoms rain down onto the diamond chamber, producing a gem, uh, a diamond. So, I would like to conclude my speech by saying, shine like a diamond and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Edmund. You provided a lot of information about diamonds. I'm impressed with that. Now, can you tell me one small thing? Why are diamonds so expensive? Any idea? Well, diamonds are so expensive because they aren't made in just two days or one day. It is a long process and it's yet too difficult. That's why they are most expensive and, they, and about their beauty. Thank you. Thank you.